Well, thank you all for coming here on a great day for the University of Texas. At UT, we aspire for excellence in everything we do, in education, in research, and in service, and yes, also in athletics. For many, Texas athletics is the front door to our university. The Longhorn family expects championships, and we demand that we compete with integrity as we develop the student athletes who wear our jerseys. Over the past three years, Coach Charlie Strong has led our football program with class and with deep core values and with a passion for the young men on his team. His commitment to academics, to the campus, and to the Austin community was evident in everything that he did. While the results were not as we or he expected, or desired, Coach Strong never wavered from being a consummate role model. I spoke with Coach Strong this morning and I wished him well and his family the best. And today we begin a new chapter in the storied history of our great university as we welcome Tom Herman and his family back to Austin as the head coach for Longhorn football. Before Mike introduces Tom, I want to briefly outline how the process unfolded. I admire and respect Coach Strong and was hoping for a bright future for Longhorn football. At the same time, I had an obligation to the university and to our fans to do due diligence in case a change had to be made, which included conversations to identify and evaluate potential candidates. Now, coaching changes happen quickly and we knew we would have to be ready to act if needed. Based on my assessment, it became clear to me that Tom Herman would be our target. Mike Perrin and I made the decision about Coach Strong this past Friday evening, and I decided not to inform the coach that night after an emotional game for him and the members of his team. I did make the decision to move forward with a change regardless of where the coaching search would take us. Late Friday night, Mike and I met with Coach Herman for the first time. We talked for several hours to determine if he was the right coach for the university and if we were the right university for him. The answer was yes to both questions. The terms of the contract were negotiated and finalized on Saturday. Later, Saturday morning, Mike informed Coach Strong of our decision, and as he expected, he handled the decision with class and with professionalism. Beyond that brief over overview and out of respect for those involved, we will not share further details about the search. But what is important is in the end, we got our man. And that man is the hottest coach in college football today. And he, he is here to lead the Longhorns. Tom is a Texas ex who coached under Mac Brown, and his success at all steps of his career are indicative of the success we expect for our Longhorns. I want to thank Mike for his leadership and vital role in this process, and it is an honor to introduce the men's athletic director for Texas Ath Athletics, Mike Perry. Thank you very much, President Finvez, and thank you for your enthusiastic support for Texas Athletics. I'm honored to stand before proud Longhorns, staff members, family and friends, student athletes and members of the media to introduce the 30th football coach to serve as head football coach, the 30th head football coach, Tom Herman, in just a few moments. technical difficulties. Thank you, Thomas. We not only welcome Coach Herman back to Austin, but we welcome to the Longhorn family his wife Michelle, his daughter Priya, and two sons aptly named TD and Maverick. 
we know that you're a big part of the coach's success, and I can't wait to see all of y'all in burnt orange. That's going to be great. Also with us today are a couple of special guests, my beloved friend Edith Royal. Thank you for being here. Coach Mac Brown. <laughs> Coach Mac Brown and Sally, uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. <laughs> and the Lost Dodge, Mary Ann, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Coach Herman is a proud Longhorn. He earned his master's degree in education here and he served as a graduate assistant under Coach Mac Brown. That was just the start of an incredible coaching career which took him to Sam Houston State, Texas State, Rice, Iowa State, Ohio State, and then the University of Houston, where he has led the Cougars to a 22-4 record over the last two seasons, including a 6-0 record against top 25 teams. Among his highlight victories during that time are victories over ninth-ranked Florida State in the 2016 Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, a season-opening win this year against then-ranked number three Oklahoma, and a victory over Louisville a few weeks ago when they were ranked third in the college football playoff rankings. After the 2015 season, Coach Herman was named a finalist for the Eddie Robinson and Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Awards. He was also chosen as the Football Writers Association of America's First Year Coach of the Year and the American Athletic Conference's Co-Coach of the Year. Before taking over at Houston, Coach was the offensive coordinator for Ohio State the year they won the national championship with their third string quarterback. It is clear after spending time with Coach Herman that he is the real deal, the right choice, and a great choice for Texas. He has a track record of success and a respected investment approach in the development of student athletes. Most importantly, his values in preparing student athletes to win in life, in athletics, and in academics are totally aligned with those of the University of Texas. I have no doubt that Coach will bring championships to Austin and graduate young men of substance. Would you please join me in welcoming Coach Tom Herman. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mike, for the kind words and uh, President Fenves for the unbelievable opportunity uh, to be here and to be a part of the Longhorn football family. Uh, before I begin, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank and express my truly heartfelt affection for the University of Houston uh, and the people that make it great. My sincere gratitude to President Couture and Hunter Juracek, the Houston campus and the greater community, but most of all, uh, the exceptional young men in the football program who I know will go on to do great things on the football field and in their lives. Houston will always have a special place for me and my family. But now we are home, and I can't wait to get started. The University of Texas is a place, a special place, and deservedly holds a seat among college football elite. We will win championships, we will build men of character, we will graduate our players, and we will do it all with integrity and with class. As we do it all together, this is not about one coach. Okay? This is not uh, about one season or one team. This is about honoring all of those uh, who have worn the burnt orange and white and who support this great university. For me, it all starts with my family. My wife, Michelle, has been my rock for over 20 years uh, and doesn't mind that I have become known for kissing other people. Um, our children, Priya, TD, and Maverick, have heard stories about my time in Austin uh, and are now and now get to see what I've been raving about. I also want to take this time uh, to let all of the former players and members of the T Association to know that the door is always open uh, and they have built Texas football into what it is today and I want them to know that you are always welcome. I also want the high school coaches of the great state of Texas 
to know that this is their football program. We're the flagship university of the best high school football playing state in America. And it, I want to continue uh, to do a great job in recruiting the fine student athletes that are produced by our Texas high school football coaches. I also want to take this time to thank Coach Brown, uh, DeLoss, and uh, Sally, of course, and, and Miss Edith for being here. Coach Brown, uh, you're a mentor and a friend, and uh, you took a chance on a young guy 17 years ago uh, who dreamed of being like you, of standing uh, here in uh, Austin wearing the burnt orange, and um, I couldn't be happier that you, you're here and made, it, made time to, to be here for me. Uh, so family is obviously very important uh, to me and our program, but now our family includes more than 100 young men who, I've decided, who have decided to represent this university and who have sacrificed and faced adversity with character and resolve. And honestly, all of you and all who love Texas are part of this family as well. Together, we can and will solidify our spot among the college football elite. Finally, I am truly honored and humbled uh, to be the next head coach of the University of Texas. And you have my word that I will work every day to lead a program that you are proud of. Thank you again, President Fenvis and Mike for the opportunity of a lifetime. Thank you for coming out today to support me and this program and hook them horns. Okay. I know everybody's anxious to ask Coach Herman a couple questions, but we're going to have President Fenvis and Mike Parent available. If anybody has questions, we've got a few minutes for them. Raise your hand and we'll get back to you. Let me start up front with uh, the middle, Brian. Greg or Mike, e either one. Could, could you both discuss how this went? At, presumably, you guys left here after the game Friday and drove to an undisclosed location, we'll call it. But how, how did, how did it, the mechanics actually work? Well, it uh, went together uh, very quickly. Uh, and uh, we were just uh, pleased to be able to arrange to meet with uh, Tom Herman uh, late Friday. And we got together in an undisclosed location that was uh, mutually convenient for both of us. Uh, he had had a very long day, a very hard day uh, playing in Memphis. Uh, we had had our own game here. And uh, so had been, and we started meeting at the end of a very long day. On the left, Mike. Uh, for, for either one of you, first of all, did you give uh, Coach Herman any parameters in terms of compiling a staff? And, and secondly, I guess there's a realistic possibility that Texas could qualify for a bowl game? Have you made a decision on whether or not you would want to do that this year? Uh, well, on the second question, the, probably Mike should answer that, but I think we talked about this earlier, the bowl game. If, if uh, we're given an invitation, the head coach will uh, make a decision uh, about it. Um, in terms of uh, the coach's staff, uh, I view, and I know Mike views, that the uh, head coach is the CEO of the football program, has uh, uh, responsibility and great latitude in putting a staff together. And uh, we will look, be looking at the staff recommendations. And ultimately, uh, any contracts have to be approved by the Board of Regents. Other questions? In the middle, Kirk. Yeah, to both of you men, uh, was there a plan B? Or, and did you interview any other candidates? Or did you put all your eggs in Tom's basket? Tom Herman was uh, my clear choice after meeting with him that night and uh, very, very impressed with uh, everything he did to get to this point uh, in his career. So uh, he's the, uh, the clear choice. Did you consider anybody else? Uh, he was our top choice, and we were just really pleased to get him here in Austin today. Stay in the middle, center. Yeah, Mike, uh, there was a lot of hope when Charlie got the job. It didn't work out. Uh, why do you think this marriage will work? Coach Herman has a uh, proven record of success where he's been. Uh, we talked about uh, philosophies of uh, offense, defense, kicking, training, all of that sort of thing. And uh, I believe he's got the uh, background, the experience to take this team to places where I would like for it to be. On your left, Sean. Over here, Karen. Uh, obviously, every coach has their own philosophy on how they uh, want to run nutrition to strength and uh, have you guys kind of pledged full support to make sure he has what he needs to make sure he can run the program as he sees fit? 
you've touched on several of the important parts of support for our students, and yes, we will have uh, continued full support there with nutrition and uh, all of that, sports science, academics, absolutely. Anything else? Greg, what, what did Thanksgiving night when the whole internet blows up with, you know, Tom is allegedly going to LSU, what are you thinking at that point? Are you, are you thinking that your guy's going to get away? Brian, I turned off my Twitter account a week ago. <laughs> so you thought nothing? Um, we were waiting for uh, Friday, the end of the season. Um, you know, had my plan. Uh, I don't let the distractions of media or social media uh, affect my planning. On the far left, Chuck. For both President Fenvis and, uh, and Mike Perrin, just curious, when you look at the resumes of, of Tom coming here, very similar to what Charlie Strong coming here, right down to the Urban Meyer connection, uh, you know, some, some big wins, turning around a program. What is it, though, about Tom that struck you, and obviously, you haven't had that much interaction, but what, what is it that makes you think he is the right guy at the right time for Texas? You know, when you look at the uh, pedigree of someone's training, uh, the discipline they bring to the practice of their craft, uh, and the discussions I had with Tom about all of that, I was convinced that uh, he, he could do the job, and I remain so convinced. He's an exceptional talent. I'm delighted to have him here. Thank you, President Fembus, and thank you, Mike Barron. We're going to let Tom return. All right, we good? Questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with Brian since he started the last one. Right hey. middle, Brian. Tom, why are you the right guy? Well, I think I'm the right guy because I surround myself with great people. Uh, we wouldn't be uh, able to do the things that, that we've done at the University of Houston without uh, a great staff. And, uh, and by that, I mean the nine assistants, the strength staff, uh, the support staff and everybody around our program um, builds us up. And I think uh, you win with people. Uh, like to steal a line from Woody Hayes, you, you win with people. And uh, I think uh, people are extremely important in what we do in, in terms of our family. And then I think that goes a little bit further, too, into recruiting. I think uh, I've recruited this state for 20-some-odd uh, years. I've grown up with the high school football coaches in this great state. I remember, um, you know, when I was at Sam Houston State as a wide receivers coach calling on, uh, you know, Cy Falls High School, for instance, and Wayne Hooks was the head coach and a guy by the name of David Raffield was the offensive coordinator and a guy by the name of Kirk Eaton was the defensive line coach and, and JV coach. And uh, as you grow up, then Coach Hooks retired and Coach Raffield gets the head job. And, uh, and then I move on to Rice and, and so on and so forth. And uh, now Kirk Eaton's the head coach and David Raffield's over at A&M Consolidated. So I think it's, um, it's important to me that uh, the, the great players in this great state of Texas um, understand that uh, we're going to do everything we can to keep them home too. So I, I think that's uh, really important. You're right, Coach. Alex? Coach, welcome back to Austin. My name is Alex Dunlap with the Orange Bloods. Um, have you had a chance to talk to the players on the team yet? And have you had a chance to just kind of get an idea of the talent that's on the roster, your overall view of the roster, and anything that any kind of communication that you've had with the team? Uh, I have talked to the team. We had a team meeting at 415 just uh, prior to coming in here and kind of laid out some expectations, uh, let them know kind of what we stood for and what they can expect after the Christmas break. And But no, I have not studied the roster, uh, you know, seen a few of their games on TV and so on, but uh, have not had a chance to study the roster. Front middle, Kirk. Uh, Charlie Strong said whoever the next coach is will win at least 10 games next year in a national championship very soon. Uh, do you feel like that puts undue pressure on you to meet those expectations? No. That would, there's never going to be any greater expectations from anybody um, outside, outside of our program. The biggest expectations we'll always have 
for the University of Texas will be from within. So whether you have expectations, Coach Strong has expectations. Coach Strong is an unbelievable man, and uh, I credit him for a lot of the relationships that he built here. And um, But uh, at the end of the day, the expectations internally will be uh, much greater than any external ex expectations can ever be. Same front middle, Bob. Hey, Coach. Bob Belu, CBS Austin. Um, Will the biggest recruiting job that you have to do be trying to get Deontay Foreman to return, a la Mac and Ricky in 1998? And second, if you remember, how did you get on that float or on that truck with Ricky in 1999? <laughs> that is a great story about uh, Deontay. Uh, I have not had a chance to talk to him, uh, planning on doing so very uh, shortly, and uh, hopefully by tomorrow morning, uh, have a chance to speak with him and, and figure out what his intentions are. Uh, the float thing, I remember, uh, obviously, it was, a, it was a big deal. Won the Cotton Bowl. I had just been hired. Uh, me and uh, a young coach named Oscar Giles uh, had just been hired as graduate assistants, and uh, they had different floats for uh, the off. They had one float for the offense and one float for the defense. And uh, then all the coaches and support staff, they got on floats. And the, the last words I remember was Cleve Bryant telling me and Oscar, don't you let anybody touch him. And so he said, we sat up there, and uh, Ricky had his own float. He had kids behind him, and uh, I actually credit Ricky for actually teaching me the hook and horn sign. So uh, that was uh, an unbelievable moment in my life. I mean, I'd been on the job like six days from Texas Lutheran, and now I'm sitting on a float with Ricky Williams learning how to hook him running down downtown Austin. It was uh, very surreal. Tom, David Nunez, ABC in Houston. Uh, how would you categorize your time in Houston? How proud are you that being your first uh, head coaching job and just the, the job you did there, 22 and 4? Extremely proud of the results, uh, but that's not even close to the, the, the thing that we're most proud of. I think um, along those lines, we changed a culture, not just of a football team, not just of an athletic department, not just of an entire university, but hopefully for uh, eons and eons to come for college football in the great city of Houston. And um, for that, I'm extremely proud. That was very, very hard work to change that culture. But the thing that I'm most proud of um, is the, the influx of text messages and phone calls that I'm getting from the current players uh, and telling me how appreciative they are for the two years they got to spend with myself and, and our staff and how we changed their lives forever in a positive way. And, um, just their reaction, uh, I mean, I can't count how many guys, and, and it, it warms my heart to know that um, we've made a difference in so many people's lives so quickly. Hey, it's Anwar Richardson from Orange Bloods. Coach, um, this team has had six wins, five wins, and five wins in three consecutive seasons. What is going to be your message to recruits, you know, to come to the University of Texas, and what will be your sales pitch? Well, I think the sales pitch will be that there, um, there is talent here. You're, you're going to be playing with some talented players, and you're going to be the best trained team in America. You're going to be physically and mentally tough. You're going to be the physically, most physically and mentally tough team on the field. Uh, never once have I, have I ever seen a uh, football coach ever hoist a championship trophy, whether it be Super Bowl, college, uh, conference trophy, doesn't matter, and say, Coach, how did, you, how did you win this championship? And they said, you know, we out finessed them. That's never come out of any coach's mouth, ever. Uh, and so they're going to know that we're going to be the most physically and mentally tough football team on the field each and every Saturday. Uh, and they're, they're going to know that they're going to get one of the premier educations uh, in the entire country, uh, living in the city of Austin and playing for a bunch of men that love them and want to build them into better husbands, better fathers, and better employees, and that winning is just a byproduct of that love. Back to the middle, Roger. Coach Roger Wallace, NBC Austin. This business kind of moves fast. Two years on the job, you imagine being a head coach, the success, and then all of a sudden you wake up this morning, you're headed to this job. How do you kind of process the way your career's gone in a rather short time? You don't. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't had a chance to wrap my head around really much of it. And as a coach, I don't know that you ever do. I think, you know, after the bowl game, you take a deep breath maybe for a day or two and reflect on the season, especially when it's good. And then 
boom, you're, you're right back at it, uh, recruiting and, and going to work. So uh, I'll leave the reflection uh, to when I retire. On your far left again, Danny. Um, <clears throat> coming from Houston to Austin, what, if any, adjustments do you think you're going to need to make as a coach in your new job? None. Uh, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, you, you got to recruit really, really hard. You got to coach your players really hard. I, I met with uh, our team again at 415. I told them uh, this program is going to be really hard. Uh, winning is hard. Uh, they don't give and, and hand out championship trophies. And um, so none of that will change because the, the formula, the blueprint doesn't it always works as long as the people uh, put in the necessary effort and energy. And uh, the blueprint and plan can only be screwed up by people and the decisions that they make. So if, if you recruit really great players, which we are going to do here at the University of Texas, and you uh, execute that plan uh, for the love of the, the guy next to you and for the love of your position coaches and uh, for the love of the program, then really, really good things are going to happen. Stand the left mic. Tom, Mike Finger, San Antonio Express News. Uh, in 1999, what was your strategy for impressing Mac Brown? And kind of, aside from the, the flow, what sticks out about your time here and what you got from this? I don't know that I impressed him at all <laughs> at that time. Uh, I, I think as a graduate assistant, you try to keep your mouth shut and, and work really hard. And uh, if they tell you to make 10 copies, you make 12. If they tell you uh, to bring a pencil, you bring three. Uh, and so you just you try to do the very best that you can while learning and soaking it in. My, my job was to, again, facilitate and, and make coaches' jobs easier uh, as a graduate assistant coach. Uh, and then, but also, I took it upon myself to learn very valuable lessons in, in how to be a head coach. Stand the left, Jim. Coach uh, Jim Vertuno with the Associated Press. This is not your first transition into a new job, but you're coming into a, a scenario where you had a lot of players passionately supportive and emotionally supportive of Charlie Strong. Your meeting tonight, was that part of, do you, do you have feelings you have to soothe to try to, try to get guys going immediately? Is there, is there going to be some emotional carryover and baggage that you have to deal with, and how do you? Yeah, I think so, and I told them. I. I, it was probably, I think it was the thing that I led the meeting off with, um, that a lot of you were, were very close to Charlie and should have been. He's, uh, he's a heck of a man and, and a heck of a football coach, and I told them that some of the things that we'll do in our program will be similar, too. But I also told them that uh, the definition of insanity is repeatedly performing the same act, expecting different results, and that, um, that we need to, to change some things. But uh, that certainly doesn't take away uh, from their emotions and, and their um, passion for Coach Strong. Middle Ed. Coach, uh, Ed Clements, KLBJ Radio. Can you give us a timeline on the staff, when you will hire staff, uh, some names you may bring from Houston, and will Major Applewhite be considered for being an assistant coach on your staff? Uh, I've, I've been here six hours. Um, <laughs> and uh, the most important thing for me right now is the players uh, in that locker room here for the University of Texas and getting on the road recruiting. So. Uh, we'll let the staff piece kind of uh, play itself out over the next couple of weeks, but haven't given it much thought. Thanks. On the left, Chip. Hey, Tom. Chip Brown. Hey, Chip. Um, Hornsdigest.com, AM 1300 The Zone. Um, you've had a chance to work with a lot of different coaches. Obviously, Mac, who's here, you know, to Paul Rhodes, to Urban Meyer, to, you know, take us through what you've taken from some of the coaches you've worked with. and how your philosophy has formed from your days, you know, sitting next to Ricky on a float in the parade? Uh, well, I, the, the thing I, I know that I, I credit Coach Brown for the most is um, his inclusivity. You know, he included the high school coaches. He included the former players. He included so many people in this great program that prior to Coach Brown getting here probably were not included and, and felt a bit disenfranchised. And Mac, Coach Brown, excuse me, um, has and had an unbelievable way. Sorry, Coach. <laughs> Slip up every now and again. But he's got an unbelievable way of, of leading people and managing people. And I, I think 
just sitting in that staff room for, for two years, you just, you just watch uh, the way that he managed people, and it was um, very eye-opening. Uh, from Coach Bailiff, I learned how to love, love your players. Love them and um, make sure that they, they feel that love. And, and in our program, we spell love, T-I-M-E, time. You can't just say it. Uh, you got to do it, and you got to spend an inordinate amount of time with your players for them to feel loved. Uh, from Paul Rhodes, I, I learned uh, how to be passionate about the place that you that you work for. Uh, Paul Rhodes was an Iowa native that had an opportunity to coach uh, in his own home state and um, was very passionate about that. Uh, and for Coach Meyer, you know, I feel like I've I went to head coaching school for three years and. Uh, People ask me all the time what, what was the thing I took away the most. There's a, a thousand things I took away from Coach Meyer, but I think probably the biggest one is the, the, the practice of alignment, that I think we are in uh, an age now that our student athletes are being bombarded with messages. And we only get them, the NCAA says we only get them four hours a day in the, during the season and two hours a day in the off season. And so when they walk in the building, they have to be Every message that is thrust upon them from a sign on the wall to an interaction with a, an academic counselor, the, the expectations and the, the management of the program has to be aligned uh, because the, they're, they're just getting hit left and right with all these messages. And so from your assistant coaches to your strength staff to your support staff to your training room to the athletic director to the academic people, the expectations, it can't be okay to show up two minutes late for a tutor but not be okay to show up two minutes late for a position meeting. And so you just, you have to be aligned in everything that you do or else uh, kids oftentimes have, a, have a, a way of going off the reservation a little bit. Middle Mac. Tom Max Olson, ESPN. For the past year, you've been dealing with speculation and rumors about where you're going. I'm sure that was tiresome for you and for your players. Is Exhausting. There, <laughs> is there some sense of relief to just uh, be past that and, and to be settled here? Yeah, there is a sense of relief, uh, especially when that place uh, is the University of Texas. It's um, take a deep breath and, and realize where you're at. It kind of makes some of that exhaustion worth it. All the way on the left, Dennis. Coach, like you say, you just got here. Dennis Delapena from Fox 7. But if <coughs> UT was able to go to a bowl game, would you? which way would you lean on that? I haven't even thought about it, and it, quite frankly, it's not a decision uh, for, for me to make. I think, um, you know, uh, Mike and I, you know, if that decision comes, we'll talk about it, but uh, have not had any discussions about it. The middle, Steve? Coach, Steve Hable from Horns Illustrated. Sorry, I have a little cold. Um, you know, the players and, and Coach Strong talked the last couple of weeks about the pressure that was put under him from social media, the player, pressure the players felt to succeed, to keep him in his job. And you see what the pressure is going to be like when you walk in here today. How, how do you handle that, Coach? Oh, I, I think pressure is that uneasy feeling that you feel when you're unprepared. Um, pressure is self-inflicted. Pressure is, um, you know, self-doubt when you're, you're unprepared. We're, we're prepared for this job. We're prepared for success at this job we're prepared for adversity in this job and so I don't I don't feel any sense of pressure uh, at all back on the left Joe coaching building your staff will there be any members of the previous staff that you'll interview or want to retain we will interview every single one of them uh, tomorrow starting at 8 a.m. I'll, I'll interview each guy individually and um, I, I'm already uh, checking on some of their backgrounds and and um, will give them an opportunity to present themselves to me as well. They have left, John. Coach John High from Fox 7. Coach Strong never used having a young team as an excuse, even though they were young. Now these guys are older. How, does it, how much easier is it for you, I don't know if easier is the right word, that you're coming in with an older, more talented team? It can be very difficult. We, we dealt with it at, at Ohio State um, because Again, there's going to be a lot of things that are different in the program. And when you have a bunch of guys that have been doing something for a certain way for, for that many years, it's very hard to, to convince them that your way is the right way. And uh, oftentimes, the upperclassmen, uh, you know, the underclassmen, they just, 
they just kind of do what you tell them to do. And uh, but the, the upperclassmen have been around the block a, a time or two, and uh, there sometimes there, there's some pushback. And I think we've got to attack them uh, first. We've, and by attack, I mean we, we've got to make sure that uh, we have the upperclassmen uh, believing in our plan and in our way of doing things. Uh, but I don't think it's it's any easier. In fact, uh, uh, I think for a lot of reasons it can be more challenging in a transition such as this. Middle Ricky. Coach, uh, Ricky Doyle, Spectrum News. When, when you talk about making copies for Mac and grabbing pencils, was there ever a time when you let yourself dream about possibly one day being in charge of a program like Texas? I don't know that my dreams ever got that big. Uh, I, I knew I wanted to be a head coach. I knew... Uh, I knew I was going to prepare myself for that opportunity uh, whenever it should arise. And um, I had a great um, guy to look to, to to say, hey, this is, um, you know, one way of, of doing that very successfully. So to say that I ever dreamt about uh, being the head coach of the University of, of Texas, uh, probably. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, as a coach, you just, you're, so singularly focused on on the day-to-day -day task at hand we don't have time to dream very often <laughs> back on the left chip um tom you talked about alignment and can you just say what your conversation was like with greg and mike about how much they'll let you have a say in alignment and how far you know reaching it needs to be for everyone to be on the same page yeah i think um I wouldn't be standing here today if uh, President Fenvis and, and Mike uh, weren't committed to aligning uh, every part of our athletic department with what we believe is a championship formula. And um, again, I thank them for that, for um, committing to, to being aligned with our plan. Middle center. Yeah, Tom, uh, Mac got you, kind of got you started and fed you as a grad assistant. How much did you uh, reach out to him when you were undergoing this process of making this move? Well, it happened so fast, Cedric. Now, there wasn't much time, to be honest with you. Uh, I've, I've reached out to Coach Brown on numerous occasions about numerous things uh, to you know, get his advice and, and counsel. But uh, this one happened so fast, uh, you know, it was, it was done before I even had a chance to pick up the phone, the first time I called him was uh, to tell him thank you and to invite him here tonight. Tom, I have no doubt that you were probably just keeping tabs from afar on this program over the years. Like you said in your press release yesterday, it's the flagship university of the state. Do you sense the, and I don't know if weight is the right word or pressure, whatever word you want to use, but how badly this fan base wants to win and win big again? Yeah, I sense that. I, uh, but if you're worth your weight uh, as a fan base, you, that's what you want. You want to succeed. You want to win. You want to win championships. And uh, the Texas fan base, I don't think, is any different than any great fan base uh, in terms of their desire to win championships. And um, I welcome that. I think that's great. Uh, we want, uh, trust me, I've been places where winning didn't matter much and, and where, uh, you know, being average was okay. And that, that's certainly not, the place here, uh, certainly not the case here, and uh, we welcome that. Middle Ed. Coach, uh, we all saw the great rivalry game between Ohio State and Michigan yesterday, and a lot of us old guys in the room remember Texas and Texas A&M. Are you on the camp that would say bring back the Texas-Texas A&M football game, I hope? <laughs> you hope. You're not supposed to hope as a journalist, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm I, a talk show host, Coach. I'm I, out there. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. I've heard that before, too. I, um, I, I, I haven't had time to think about it. Uh, ask me again in a couple weeks, and I'm, okay. I'm sure logistically that's probably pretty difficult being the schedules have been set for, for quite some time, but haven't even given it a thought. And anything I tell you now would be a rash uh, answer. Thank you. Far, far left, Chuck. Tom, Chuck Carlton, Dallas Morning News. I remember hearing Mac more than a few times talk about how Texas is a different place and a different job than almost anything else, and nothing really prepares you for it. You've been here. You've seen that. Do you have to make any 
I don't know changes, but do you have to adjust to Texas, or are there anything special about Texas uh, that, that you're aware of coming in? I think the biggest thing is how special, you guys are playing dodgeball over there, huh? mm -hmm. uh, is how special the high school football is. I've, I've recruited now, I, I've probably recruited all 50 states maybe except for Alaska and, and Hawaii, uh, but the, the, it doesn't get any better than this. And I know you, especially the people that grew up here in the, the state of Texas, uh, it's not even close anywhere else in the country to how well coached these young men are and how important football is in this state. And so I think uh, that from someone who has never been here might be a huge adjustment uh, because the high school coach is so important and uh, high school football is so important around here. But I don't think um, other than that, you know, that there is much that I would need to adjust to just because I've, I've been in this state for so long and, and had, uh, you know, numerous jobs around the state and have kind of seen uh, the way Texas is, um, you know, looked upon by, by uh, the people of this state. Why do you think David Bailiff gave you that shot at Texas State back in, in 2005 and you were so successful there? And then what has he meant to you, um, especially being in Houston close to him? Yeah, he definitely he, uh, took, a, took a chance on me. I was at coach for four years at Sam Houston State and we had just got done finishing 11 and three campaign and Ron Randleman, a great coach, uh, retired, and the, the next guy who came in, you know, don't blame him what, whatsoever, uh, you know, brought his own guys in, and I was out of a job after going 11 and three. And I think Priya was one at the time, and uh, it was pretty, pretty nerve wracking time in my life. And uh, credit to my good friend, Craig Niver, who was on staff with me at Sam Houston State and had transitioned to go be Coach Bailiff's defensive coordinator his first year there in 04 he said well, they were looking for an offensive coordinator quarterbacks coach and he said this guy can do it and I had never coached quarterbacks never called a play a day in my life and uh, Craig stood on the table for me to at least get me in front of coach bailiff and I think you know our vision for what a successful offense and successful offensive coordinator was uh, was very aligned and you know that 2005 season was magical. You know, with Barrick Neely and going 11 and three, and uh, two or three rounds deep in the in the one double A playoffs. And um, I can't. I mean, I, I owe a lot of my career to him and that chance he took on me. On your left, Anwar. Coach, obviously Texas wasn't the only school that was interested in you. You were pretty hot commodity at the time. When you when you sat down with Fenves and, and Perrin, can you just give us maybe some idea as to what eventually brought you here, like your thought process, and what eventually kind of swayed you to say you're going to come to this school? Well, uh, I think it goes back to um, the alignment. I think it, it goes back to, you know, there, there were two guys in that room that um, had a vision of what Texas football uh, should be. And... So did I, and I think that v those visions lined up very uh, perfectly. And uh, also for me personally, just being able to continue to recruit the, the great state of Texas and, and build your roster from within our uh, state lines is something that's very important to me, having built so many relationships in this great state. So uh, I think those are probably the two, two biggest draws were those two men over there and their vision for Texas football uh, and the ability to continue the momentum that uh, we've created in, in recruiting this great state for many years. Got time for two last ones, Roger and then Sarah. Coach, what do you love about coaching and how do you continue to improve and evolve as a head coach? I love the players. That's what I love about coaching. Um, what I did yesterday to, to tell the University of Houston players that I was leaving was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And I'm not ashamed to admit it and I cried in front of them and cried when I left uh, because uh, you get into this business none of us got into this business to make money uh, it's been well documented what my salaries were on on uh, you know my my climb throughout the the coaching ranks you get in this business to change young men's lives you get in this business because of how coaches affected your life my life 
Uh, I was tremendously influenced by coaches. And so uh, you want to teach young men through the great game of football how to be better husbands and fathers and employees. And uh, you, you want to mold young men's lives. And I, I think that the, the whole, the winning and, all, and the fans and all that, it's a byproduct. It's all a byproduct. And so I think uh, you say, well, why don't you just go coach Division Three for the rest of your life? Well, I think there's, there's also in all of us coaches that competitive fire that says, I, I want to go uh, be the best at my craft. I, I want to go do it for the best place uh, in the best way possible and win a whole bunch of games and win a whole bunch of championships. And so that's why you, you aspire to be at a place like Texas is to now you have the best of both worlds. You, you have the ability to affect and change young men's lives in a positive manner all the while while competing for uh, championships. Uh, Sarah Merrifield, CBS Austin. Coach, you talk about, just to piggyback off that, you talk about love and care for your players in this program, the gestures you make and the, and the actions of love and care for these players. Why are those important to you? And um, what, do you, what kind of TLC are you going to pour into this program, especially one that's been through a lot in the last year or so? Yeah, I think, I think the TLC needs to be earned, too. So that, you know, we're, we're not going to be, um, it's not going to be Camp Texas around here, I can tell you that. Uh, we're, this is going to be a very difficult program, especially at first. And you're going to have to earn uh, the respect and trust and, and love of, of our coaching staff and of myself. Uh, but once you have, I mean, it's the sky's the limit. If Once you've proven yourself to, to us as, uh, as a, a bona fide dude, a, a real guy, a guy that we can trust and count on, uh, then the, the, the love is, is limitless. And... Uh, but I, I would imagine that the first few weeks, few, first few months is going to be a, a lot of proving, a lot of me proving myself to the players and, and the, the plan, and a lot of the, the players proving themselves to not only me and our coaches, but to their teammates as well. Thank you, Coach. All right. Hang tight for a second. I'm going to have President Pembis and Mike and Mike and Coach and Public Quick Program.